Yeah, hi, <laughs> it's Tilda. Uh, we're just kind of waiting. Uh, let's just see if there's any more kind of joining us. So yeah, I have Stephen in the background. He's going to keep me right tonight. So uh, yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's seven o'clock. So let's just get started. So yeah, welcome to our online class, Finishing Techniques for Knitting. Uh, I'm going to take you through uh, a couple of different subjects tonight. So um, it's basically going to be the importance of swatching, blocking, and then we're going in to see some of the stitches that you're kind of sewing up your knitting with. So we're going to go through the mattress stitch, sewing up horizontally, so sewing up just shoulder seams. Um, sewing up um, in garter stitch because you, even though you can use mattress stitch for garter stitch, that is a better way of doing that. So uh, then we're going over to do some grafting, which is also called the Kitchener stitch, which was the uh, uh, came well, Lord Kitchener came up with this stitch under the First World War. It's quite an interesting story. Uh, and after the grafting, I'm going to show you some short rows. Uh, then after the short rows, I'm going to show you the three needle cast off. It means the short rows can also shape your shoulder seams. So instead of casting off when the pattern says casting off, you can do short rows and keep your stitches on your needle. And then you can do a three needle cast on and save yourself a little bit of time of sewing up. Um, and then I'm going to show you picking up stitches. And I'm going to show you a couple of different stitches. And finally, I'm going to show you how to weave in ends. There is a number of different ways of weaving in ends, but I'll show you a couple tonight. Well, let's get started. So the importance of swatching. Um, what is a swatch? Basically, these wee ones here are swatches. So your pattern will tell you that you have to get a specific tension so if you don't know your tension it's quite important that you you find out what it is well you can most knitters actually don't swatch they just go by the needles that's in the pattern and um, yeah just hope for the best uh, quite a few times knitters do get disappointed because the size is not what they expect it to be and it's basically because they haven't hit the right tension so yeah, uh, so as I was kind of going through here, why it's important. So it's important, the, the objects or the garments that's important for is basically the likes of, yeah, jumpers, uh, cardigans, hats, socks, gloves, mittens, something which you have something you're actually putting in so it needs to kind of fit around. Um, because if you have too loose a tension, your garment will be bigger. If you have too tight a tension, your garment will be smaller. So it can be as much as you're knitting. If you're trying to knit a size small and your tension is too loose, you're going in to knit a large. Or the opposite, if you're far too tight and you were knitting a large, you end up with a small. So tension is important. So when you knit a tension square, so they will tell you where they're measuring the tension. So use the pattern um, that the pattern is specifying. So if you let's say you're knitting a moss stitch, they might say that your tension is 28 by 30 rows, 28 stitches by 30 rows in moss stitch. So obviously knit your tension square in moss stitch. Add at least four stitches more because you want the tension square to be a little bit bigger. So you, when you're measuring your tension, you don't uh, go right to the edge because edges sometimes curl in. You can see with these garter stitch samples I have here, the, the edges are kind of curled. So you want it to be a little bit bigger. Again, you knit a few more rows. Um, also, it's important that you're measuring after you blocked the item because when you're blocking is technically kind of almost kind of washing your garment or so it 
when you wash your garment, your stitches will relax. So if you measured it before it has been blocked, you're not getting the correct tension. Most people do uh, do the tension squares kind of the wrong way. They knit, they knit them up, then they measure them and think that's all fine. So you can still get some difference if you're kind of, if you haven't blocked them. So yes, so to correct your tension is, if you're too tight, you go up in needle sizes. So if the pattern says a four and you, you're too tight, you go up to a four and a half or maybe even try a five. Again, you will swatch to figure out what one uh, you would use. If you're too loose and it says a four, go down to three, seven, five or three and a half and then try again doing a tension square until you get the most important bit is actually the width of it. You can always kind of slightly adjust for the height. So it's more, more important that the width is correct. So I'll just move on to blocking because that's kind of the, even though that's one of the kind of later stages is obviously important for your swatches. But blocking is basically kind of dampening or steaming your, your fabric. Um, so before you sew up, a lot of patterns will tell you to block. And you basically, you can do it with a steam iron. So if you've got stocking stitch, put a wee damp uh, towel, tea towel or something on it, and then gently iron it with the steam. So it's also by having a towel or a tea towel uh, between the iron and your knitting, you're protecting it. Don't necessarily kind of flatten it too tight. If you have a fabric like garter stitch, you do not want to do that. You might, you want to dampen it and then stretch it out and use some either blocking pins or, so I'm just going to show you these ones are the blocking pins. You can get T pins, which are these we, I'll try and see if I can get close enough here. So you've got your T pins. You also got knit blockers, which is like wee combs. And they come, you can get like a really colorful set like this from Knit Pro. So you can see they have wee combs. These ones are better for straight edges, whereas the T-pins are really good for if you want anything out in kind of points. So, well, let me just try and, and, and show a, a close-up. So if you have like these ones, you'll, have, you'll actually have a wee mat to block. You can see how that kind of, make a, quite a nice straight edge. Whereas if you're using your T-pins, it really point, it kind of makes it out into a point. Um, so if you're doing a baby shawl or something like that, where you're having a lot of kind of points, you'll use your T-pins. Otherwise, you also have blocking wires. I don't have them here in the shop, but um, yeah, these ones is, it's good to have both. Yeah, they stick into this. The um, Stephen is just kind of mentioning here. What do they stick into? It's you can get these foam mats. You can uh, you can buy them from yarns or likes of Knit Pro, um, who's producing knitting needles and stuff like that. Have to say that you might as well just buy one of these uh, jigsaw puzzle, these kind of foam jigsaw puzzles for uh, babies. They are a little bit cheaper unless you want, if you are buying one of the knitting ones, do buy, I'm just going to switch back here. So do buy um, one that has kind of measurements on. I have one from Knit Pro and it's actually exactly like one of the, um, one of these kind of blank uh, baby mats. And I think it's at least double the price. So yeah, just go for the, Go for the, the baby puzzles, the be foam ones, or the ones if you are buying from from um, um, Haberdashery Company, get the ones with the lines where you can measure and they will have kind of measurements on it as well. So that is blocking. So uh, let's move on to mattress stitch. So I will show you kind of close up again. So here we have two squares. So you will use mattress stitch for sewing up side seams. 
or if you're having set in sleeves, you would also so, uh, use mattress stitch. Normally, I will use my tail end. Uh, in this case, I'm actually going to use a contrasting color. So I'm just going to put that one away, just so you can see. Uh, so you can use this for stocking stitch. You can also use it for most stitch. You can use it for a rib, and it makes your seam almost invisible. So the way you do this is that you go, so actually before I do this, I'm going to just show you the fabric here because when I pull this out, you can see these kind of bars that goes between the rows of stitches. Can you see there? They just goes in there. These are the ones we want to pick up and we want to pick them up between the first and the second stitch on either side of that and you can see when it's a stocking stitch fabric it kind of rolls so it can sometimes be just a little bit difficult to navigate in so let me try and get the ends a little bit away here so i will start by putting my yarn from my back of my um, my first fabric up into the first hole let me see if i can find that here i think it's is there and I'm sewing from the front because then I can kind of control it I can see I want my inside seam to be at the back so that's why I'm sewing from the front um, over here again I'll go in from the front and I will go in can you see this in here and I will actually go under two bars so just manipulate your fabric so you can see it. So there's one bar here and going up to the second bar. And pulling my thread out. Then I go back to where I came from. So exactly the point where the yarn is coming out from the first one. I will go into that and then again I'll find two bars. So this is my first one and this is my second one. And I'll pull again. I'm going to leave it a little bit loose uh, and I'll show you later on how you tighten it up. So again, I'm going back into on the opposite side exactly where I came from and under one and two bars here. And I'm going up. Uh, so I like to have start with kind of close to me and then work my way away from myself. So again, over where I came from under two. And just keep going again where I came from and just manipulate your fab your kind of fabric so you can actually see the bars. They will uh, the fabric will kind of pull back in, so so don't worry about kind of think that you're going to make big holes, you're not. So back in there. And back in from where I came from and up. If you and I had someone having this problem the other day. If one bit is longer than the other and you need to get them to, to, to fit together, you can actually manipulate it by the one that is longer, you go under two bars. And the one that is shorter, you just go under one. That will start pulling it uh, together. Uh, so it will kind of correct it uh, and you can't really see it. I've seen that. Anyway, when you do this mattress stitch, you are pulling your yarn and you can see how it just makes the whole thing kind of disappear and the seam becomes invisible. So this is a, a great seam to be able to master. So let's move on to sewing up horizontally. I'll just take this one out and move that away. So I made a wee sample here that um, replicate like a shoulder seam so you can see there's a wee dip. So again it's the same technique as the mattress stitch. And again, I'll be using a contrasting color. 
but here you can see your stitches are running um what is it called horizontally to towards me um or so again you start off by going from your back of your fabric and you go over to the other side you want to get in right at the corner and then under a line of stitches so again like two legs you can see there and you go back over again you're going in exactly where you came from just like the mattress stitch and in and in where you came from and under a full stitch so again two legs one leg and two there you can see them Stephen is asking me what I mean by legs a stitch if you look here have we are calling them two legs so it's one side of the the stitch plus the other side So again, I'm going back in where I came from and under two strands or two legs and back in. And I, it's a good idea to actually keep your... Uh, kind of your stitching quite loose so you can actually see but see again here we're, we're pulling the and it becomes invisible so I always open it up a little bit so I can see because I'm always navigating from the yarn I've just been sewing with so back in again over to the other side I want to get to the corner up here so I'm just going to do this very quickly And this is a great way of sewing up shoulder seams. So now I've got to, I'll just kind of, and open it up again. So now I've got to the bit where the fabric kind of goes down a bit. So you're, you're shaping in your shoulder seams. So I go again, I go in. And I basically just follow the stitch. I want to get under two here again. So I just kind of follow it down. It's almost kind of stepping down. So again, in where I came from, this is also a, a very um, good indicator of whether you have actually, and again, I'm just manipulating my wheel. If I can't quite find that wee leg, or the wee strand I'm going um, going under. I'm just manipulating it so I can. So here again, it's you're just kind of stepping down, and then and then it becomes much the same again when you have done this wee step here, and when you have tightened this up, you can't really can't see your seam so. But let's move on to the next one. So sewing up garter stitch. That is a slightly different technique. So I'm just checking here that I get my... So the way to see which one is your cast off edge I can see there's a wee row of stitches up here and my cast on edge is a slightly different uh, texture and I navigate by my tail I use a long tail cast on so I know that my, in my the, the right side of my fabric is always um, I have my tail to the left or to the right sorry so if my tail's to the right I'm looking at my uh, my right side have to see in garter stitch it's pretty 
the same. So it's not really the end of the world if you don't um, get it. So again, I like to sew up lines, but I will use this thread, uh, the colour thread to, to show you. And again, I'm just securing them together. Or I'm going in here from the back. Then in garter stitch, if you look at the rows, you've got a wee curve that's almost like a frown in a row. And next, right next to it, a little bit below it, you've got a curve that's a little bit like a smile. So the way you sew garter stitch together is that uh, I'm actually going to just attach these ones together like this. And then I'll go in. So in one side, so the smile is a little bit too close to the edge. So I'll go into the frown here in the opposite. And then I will go over and catch my smile. Sorry, that was... I let me just have a wee kind of that's I think I got this one slightly out of line you will have to sometimes you will have to pick them out at them um, and start again because actually I want to go into my smile on this side here so if you go into the smile on one side you want to go into the frown on the other side and I'm going into this one. So I'm trying to make them as close to the edge as possible. And then I'll go into my smile on this side and the frown. And keep it quite loose. Don't pull it too tight. So again, your smile and your frown. You want to go up in the same line on either side. It takes a little bit of practice, but when you get it, it's it is very easy. It's it's actually quite good to knit up some of these sample squares, and uh, and then just practice. Uh, I have knitted these up in a chunky wool. So it just makes it a little bit easier. So you could start off by knitting some of these squares up in the chunky wool. If you do this, obviously now it doesn't look particularly tidy uh, because it's the red uh, wool. I am just going to take a little bit of white wool to show you how it's going to look. if it's sewn up so i'm just going in here so where i came from just and i'll go into my smile and my frown and my smile and my frown and you can see now it becomes almost invisible. My smile. And my face. So you can see here the difference. You can't really see your join. Um, it's only because it's red you can see it. So that is the garter stitch uh, sewing up. So, yeah, is there any questions so far, Stephen? I'm just, okay. I think I'm going to just move on to the Kitchener stitch now. So this is called grafting. This can be quite a challenge for people. 
um, I always have my wee cheat sheet. Or at least I start off with it. So again, I'm going to use some contrast color here for, for doing this. So for grafting, you will use this mainly for for socks. So it's mainly used for socks to to close the toe. It was um, it was kind of developed by well, I think it's been um, been on the go for quite a while. But Lord Kitchener made it kind of. Uh, very famous because he got people to do this for socks. Obviously, people haven't been doing it for socks. It was under the First World War that uh, people was suffering from a uh, trench foot. And it was a lot of it was due to that they had seams in their socks. So they were digging into the toes and too many people actually died from that. So he was uh, on a mission to get people to, um, to sew up the toe seams like this to avoid trench foot so but anyway you've got a setup row when you start so you go on to your front so you're using your um your tapestry needles as a wee knitting needle so as if you're going to purl you're putting that in and my wee cheat sheet sits here on that means that you leave the stitch on the needle you're then going to the back and you knit. Oops, let me just get some of these ends away. And again, you leave them on the needle. Then you have a four step repeat. So you're going back to your front and in the same stitch as you were purling, you're now knitting and taking your stitch off. Oops, I think I've got the end a little bit tangled up here. And then you're going to your, uh, you're still working on the front, you're then purling and leaving this one on. I like to keep my yarn underneath here. So then I'll go over to my uh, back and I will purl and I will take that off. Again, you would use your, your tail end uh, to do this with. And the next one is again, you're on your back and you're knitting off or knitting and you're leaving it on. You're then going back to the front and you're knitting off and you're purling and leaving it on. You move to the back and you're purling, sorry, purling off and knitting on. You can see why it's quite good to have this uh, cheat sheet. So back to the front, knit off, purl on, purl off, sorry, purl off, knit on, knit off, and it looks a little bit messy to begin with but as soon as you start kind of pulling your your yarn and you might have to use your your darning needle to kind of pull them up you need to leave them so they actually look like stitches So don't pull them tight so you can't see your stitches. They need to be left on um, so you can actually see, see your stitches here. Oops. 
this takes a little bit of practice and uh, a lot of people say oh i can't i can't talk while i'm doing it uh, and quite right because you can get this one really really wrong well you can always start again this not really the end of the world so you can see that uh, that makes it look like the knitting just goes from one side to the other. You can use this for side seams, but I'm going to show you the, the three needle cast off. And even though this one maybe look a bit better, the effort of the effort of doing this compared to the three needle cast off was also looks really, really good. Um, I would prefer well, I personally prefer the, the three needle cast off. So I hope you've got a bit of a uh, introduction to how you do this. And again, I will make this available to you. So again, when you get to the last two two stitches, you're um, you'll basically you will uh, done a back. So let me just take it to here. You're just doing your knit off and purl off, and that's basically how you kind of end it. So that if that's the end, this is how you do. And again, you just, you can keep manipulating. Sometimes if you are in the same color as the fabric, it can be, can be a little bit difficult to see. So again, a lot of practice and you will master this one. So, um, before I show you the three needle cast off, I just want to show you how to do short rows. Because often when you're doing a shoulder seam, you want to, um, well, the shoulder seams, they're asking you to cast off a certain number of stitches, and then you knit to the end, go back the way, cast off a number of stitches. So it's almost like a wee kind of stairs that go yeah a little bit up and then so it's a bit stepped so obviously if you're doing a three needle cast off you do not want to um, to cast off your stitches so instead so if the pattern says let's say knit Eight. Then I place a marker because, or cast off eight, sorry, not knit eight. The Z cast is the I then put a marker in because these are the stitches that's supposed to be cast off. I will then knit on. And then you would likely be asked to Pearl back. And then you will turn where you have your marker. Then I do something called a German short row because if you just knit it now, you'll get quite a big gap. If I knit here, I can show you, I get quite a big kind of gap in between and you don't really want to have that. So I'll just take it back. So I do, I like the German short rows. So instead of putting my, my yarn between my needles uh, to start knitting, I actually take my yarn over my needle and pull this stitch up. So you can see now there's like there's two loops. This is only one stitch. I will then slip that one and knit the next. So there the pattern will say to you knit another, uh, let's say just eight 
in this case I only got 16 stitches so I will just knit here and then I will show you how to do your um, uh, do your three needle cast off but again if they were saying knit so many stitches or cast so many stitches off knit or knit the stitches they want you to cast off place a marker and do the same thing um, so again the, sh the short rows so but here I have now these two fabrics they both have this kind of shaping so again I got a stitch here with two two loops that is my uh, this is the, the, the way I turned so I want to when I get to that stitch I want to knit that as one the same with this one here but the way to do three needle cast off most times you want to have the seam on the back so if you want to have the seam on the back you will lie your fronts together so and you will have your wrong side facing you i'm going to remove this uh, this marker actually i'm going to snip this off now if you use a, a locking stitch marker you won't have to to do these things so i take my end from the front work if it turns out that you don't have an awful lot of yarn on this one, just use the back one. But again, so a three needle cast off basically means that you're using one, two, three needles. So you're going in as if to, or to knit the first stitch and then you're also going into the first stitch on the other side. And then you knit those ones together. Then you go into this stitch here and again the corresponding stitch on the other needle and you knit them together and then you lift your first stitch over the second just like a normal kind of cast off so again in through the loops and <coughs> off and and here so and you just yeah you lift them over so your normal kind of cast off so again you have your first, you need your stitch from the first needle and the second needle. You knit this and you just take them off and then you lift your stitch over. I am going to do the full row here. Make sure when you cast off, you don't cast off too tight. It can pull in the seam. So, and I'm casting this off. Oops. I'm lifting my stitch over. And now I have got to the stitches where I have turned. So make sure that I'm under both. So now I have almost like, it looks like I have four stitches on. So again, I knit that and off. Oops, this one has got stuck down here a little bit. So get them off and cast this off. And I just keep going. So it can be a little bit fiddly when you first try this. So just nearly there then, and I'll show you how the seams are looking. I just cut my end and pull my yarn through. So 
you can see the seam this so this is from the back it looks really nice and neat and this is from the front so it's definitely looks as good as let's just see if you compare them with the sewn up seam you can see it's much more it's kind of flatter whereas this one is definitely a big ridge here oops let me just get it definitely a big much bigger ridge on this side that there is on and this is nice and neat so um So that was the, the three needle cast off. I'm going to show you, uh, yeah, I was just, maybe just say, so I'm going to show you a couple of kind of picking up stitches because a lot of times you're picking up uh, for a neckline or for a cardigan all the way around, or as again, socks, if you're knitting socks, the heel flap, you'll be picking up. I'm going to show you a special way I do it for the socks uh, particularly. Uh, but initially, I'll just show you how you do it uh, on a, a normal uh, knitting. I'll show you how you do it at the side and also how you do it at, um, at the top of a, uh, a piece of knitting. So, I will just switch back to here. So let's just try and move some of all of this stuff away. So we're not getting distracted. Again, I will use a contrasting color. So a pattern will normally tell you to knit, to cast on a a specific number of stitches between two points. Uh, I tend to initially ignore that and I will just go in so I when I pick up stitches like this I will do it again in the same line as if I was uh, kind of sewing so in the line between your first and your second stitch. Uh, you can see in stocking stitch the, the, uh, the sides really curl so be careful that you're not suddenly going too far in so I'll I'll um, that's why it's sometimes good blocking these things so I'll go right down to my start and if you're I'm a picker so I will just kind of pick my so picking is uh, the way on it it's um it's the continental style. And instantly I can see I actually got it in the wrong line. So back out and I'll move over just a wee, wee tat. Um, so yeah, pickers are the ones who hold the yarn in the left hand and throwers, which is a UK way, is the ones who hold it in the right hand. So again, I pick my stitches out like this. If you're a thrower, you might prefer to do it like this. So I go into every single, so in every single hole, so I skip like a, one of these bars we were talking about earlier. So I skip one of them and I go in and I get my stitch out and again in and round and out and And again, so I'll go over to, I'm a little bit quicker with the, the picking. You will definitely, you're likely to be quicker with the throwing. So again, every single one. It's more important to get your stitches picked up so they look good. Uh, and then worry about the how many stitches you have on. So let's say this is the stitches you need to cast on for, um, and you need to pick up, but, um, but you now have too many. So in the first row or round, 
I will decrease down to the number of stitches that the patterns are telling me to, to pick up. So let's see, there's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. So let's say we needed 16. I have 18. So I would decrease about here and I will do that. It, it depends if I'm knitting in the round. I will, and it's a rib, I will do it when I'm purling. If this is rows and this is your front and you're going to do a, a wrong side row, I will then go in and do, let's see, it's a rib again, it's your knit, purl, and then I would, let's say, knit two together. That's me reducing it by one. Then I will purl and knit and purl and knit. So I'll just find the place where I want it. You want to do it kind of evenly along. You don't want to kind of gather all the, the decreases in, in one end. So again, I will knit a few more and then I will then knit two together to get down to the stitches that the pattern was telling me. And and then you will knit, you'll basically knit your stitches. If you find that you have too big, the holes get too big, the first row again, you can knit or purl your stitches through the back loop to tighten them up. Again, it's looking a little bit messier because it's in a contrasting color. I can promise you that if you do it in the, the correct rule, it will look much, much nicer. So this was how you pick up stitches at the side. If you're going to, I'm going to pull this back out. If you're pulling, if you're picking up from a cast on or a cast off edge, you would want to do it in rows instead of, um, so to make it look like the, the knitting just kind of continues, you're actually going in between the rows. So this one was a cast on edge so if i turn that round you can see this is my first stitch the second the third the fourth i want to then pick up my stitches in between so i will pick them up in this bit because when you then turn it round it looked like the other stitches so it's in between the rows so your row is here, the first one. So I will take, let's just use this one again. So again, I will, and I will skip a full stitch, go in, skip a full stitch, and skip a full stitch. So I had someone who was doing this. It's used, this, this is a technique that's often used if you're knitting top down. So I had someone today who had knitted the back of her jumper and she was to pick up stitches for the, the front of the jumper. In, um, and she was told to pick up in between the rows. So here, if I knit, all right, I will purl this one because I'm on the wrong side. I will show you how the stitches are looking like they're just continuing. So I'll try and come over to the side.
so you can see if you can see here that my stitch here has a V there and then the, the one on top in the red also have the V there and that if you keep going it would just look like there's no uh, there's no seam whereas you can see on the back there's a little bit of a seam I don't know if you can see it you can see it's a little bit heightened but this is a very nice way of um, of joining especially if you want to kind of round uh, a shoulder seam so that is how you pick up those stitches now I would like to show you how that you pick up stitches for I'll put that side if you were having a heel flap so you have to do for this way of, of, of picking up stitches you have to have slipped the first stitch of every round or every row sorry so knit you're slipping your first stitch purl wise and then you're knitting the row you're then slipping your stitch purl wise and purling the row back and you'll end up with stitches the edge stitches are basically two stitches tall you can see here these ones are you have one stitch there where you have two here again one stitch there and you've got two there one stitch and two so here we can actually use the edges of the stitches so go in as if you're going purl wise into these slipped stitches so go from the back to the front sometimes it can be if you're really finding this a struggle here I had someone else who went and went from the other end and then instead went in from the front and she found that uh, a bit easier uh, I prefer the other way so I'm going to show you that so again in and just sliding these ones on so here you got the loops on so if you are knitting into it like normal so again I'll slide my needle up as you can see I prefer to, to use the circular needle that is very personal. If you're liking, there's no nothing wrong in preferring straight needles. It's something that you will you'll find um, out. But yeah, do try different needles. It's always good. So if I was just to knit this one, I can show you. So if I just knitted this one, the edge would not look very good. It would be, you can see it's far too loose. So I'll take these one back out and I'll show you. You have to knit them through the back loop. So you go in instead of, so you go in as if you're almost like if you're purling, but you're actually knitting. So you're going in there. And if you're a thrower, you'll go in and do it like this. So again, nearly at the end. I use this method um, in, in socks or sometimes edging. Um, it just makes that, well, you're basically not getting any ridge here. It just looks like a knitted fabric. Uh, Stephen, can I get you to give me that striped uh, shawl there? Or the striped blanket there. Yeah. Because I was asked to pick up stitches um, for that one and I picked up my loops. So, so this is my uh, one of my... So when you look at the back, you're getting a really, really nice and flat finish to this. Uh, 
So yeah, that's uh, that's how you pick up some stitches. Now let's move on to doing weaving into veins. So let me just see where did I put my sewing needle? Let's see here. So just for illustration purposes, I'm doing it in a in a contrast colour. You can do it from the front, so, and you can use kind of duplicate stitches. So duplicate stitches mean, basically mean that you're lying stitches on top of each other. This is also a way of, it's also called Swiss darning, this one. So if you were to add some colour work, if you were adding a tiny wee motif or something, uh, which it looks like colour work. Uh, but yeah, this is a, a great way of of sewing in ends. So that is done in, in stocking stitch like this. And you will then secure the you will secure your kind of end on the back and you can snip this one up. So this is how it looks from the back. You can also weave an end from the back and where you're going into the stitches like this. I don't really like this method myself, but some people do and you'll find the ones that you prefer. So you're going underneath to and that's a different way of weaving in. You can, because it's a different colour, you can slightly see that shining through. It's not really going to be that visible if you're using uh, the same will. If you're sewing up seams, I like to put my ends into my seams and the way I do that is basically just, well let's see there's a seam here or there's a, so I, I actually go into the wool because then it gets filtered in with wear. So I like to kind of go in, in into the stitches and just slide them out and, and I will then snip my yarn. And you won't see that uh, from the front either. So another way of weaving in ends in stocking stitch which I'm I'm not using this one uh, particularly often, or but you can actually go into in and weave them in in the bars. So you have to skip a bar and then go underneath, skip a bar and go in, go underneath. And skip a bar and go in. So this again because it's a contrast colour you can see it. I'm just going to see I've got a bit of a tail here. I'm going to show you in that as well. So if you were to do this with the same colour again you go in under a bar and skip one under the bar and skip one and then you kind of sew that up you won't you won't see that and that can be used in um, in a rib as well so in stocking stitch let's find that one over here
I'm just going to use this one here. Again, you can you can go in under your stitches, your ridges, you can do just one. So yeah, or you can go two, under two here, so under two ridges. So again, you can't see that from the front. You can only slightly see a color. Again, if that was in the white, you would not, you would not notice at all. So yeah, that is everything I have for you. I think we're kind of buying on time. So uh, now, if there's anyone who wants me to show you something again, or if you have some questions. So I'm just going to So blocking um so uh, if you're for example yeah in, the importance of blocking is that if you want something um to look the best it can be so if you're gifting an item away um obviously you want it to look the best it can be so you would want to kind of dampen it down um and blocking when you're blocking you kind of dampen like your fabric the fibers relax oh, again blocking can only be done in natural fibers blocking is not good for acrylics so cotton wool um, often when you knit up in cotton, you might think, oh, I don't like this result and it looks looks too rough. Um, and if as soon as you have kind of actually washed it or dampened it down, this the stitches will even out. So blocking really just kind of get the stitches to relax in wool and in and it will get the size it will also get that size that you're meant to have um, or the every time you kind of wash your garment that is after blocking that's oh, I'm not explaining this very well um, it makes it easier to handle to flatten the fabric right? yeah flatten so it, so it's so you're about to the block of the pattern yeah so uh, Yeah, the, uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, um, yeah, but so blocking does, for example, for when you're, yeah, sorry, I forgot to, to switch back to me. Uh, but blocking was, will, yeah, will flatten a fabric down. So before you sew, um, so when if you, if you can't do it while it's uh, not been blocked, this will flatten down and make it so much easier to handle. Again, it will look make it look the best it can be. Again, socks, um, you have specific blockers for socks that you actually stick into the sock. And if again, if you're gifting it away, um, yeah, if you're gifting uh, a sock away, it's quite a good idea to put them on uh, these blockers because it does really give them that kind of sock form that uh, makes it look uh, extremely nice. Um, Yep. Did I answer the question? Yeah. So just tell us about seeing the videos if it is already available and then put it on PDF. Yeah. Yeah. So um, obviously this recording will be available for you. Um, so you can watch it back. And uh, we will email you out the, the link. And also I will produce the PDF where I will kind of explain to you again the importance of swatching, the importance of blocking, uh, and 
just a little bit of the background between the, or what you would use the different stitches for. Um, so yeah, you'll get a, a, a PDF. I will also send you out this kind of kitchen a stitch uh, sheet. Uh, I'll make it a little bit nicer. So, so it looks a little bit more inviting. Um, yep. Yeah. So uh, again, we will also be producing some more videos that goes on our YouTube channel for like we stitch patterns and kind of maybe a walkthrough of patterns. So yeah, keep an eye on our YouTube channel uh, for anything kind of new and upcoming. So uh, if I don't have any more questions, I'm going to wrap up. If anyone wants me to show something again. Okay, yeah, well, thank you so much for, for joining. And um, I know that I will see some of you in the store. And for the ones who's not uh, in the area, you're more than welcome to to come by if you do come. But yes, thank you very much. And yes, please keep in touch. Thank you. Bye.